Hello vinyl community. It's a pretty green vinyl guy here and um, this video is in response to uh, Matt's contest that he has right now and uh, Matt's question was uh, name your favorite year in music and the two albums and why. So for me, first of all it was really hard. Um, you know obviously you could go to 1967, Sgt. Peppers, or you could go to 1971, Led Zeppelin IV. I mean, there's so many iconic years with so many great albums, but then I guess the bigger part of the question is, you know, why does it influence you? So that got me thinking about 1983. Um, in 1983, I turned 15. And, uh, you know, my music... My introduction to music before that was basically what my dad had in his collection. So I was a pretty well-rounded kid in classic rock. The Beatles, Pink Floyd, The Stones, Van Morrison, uh, Fleetwood Mac, Supertramp. Um, I knew all about those and I knew all those albums inside and out. And they're all fantastic. I still love them to this day. But I remember when I turned 15, that's when I found my own music. And, you know, you're 15 years old. They got a paper route, so I had some had some money, and I remember buying my my own albums and discovering my own type of music. And uh, 1983 was a big year, um, you know. You had Bowie's Let's Dance, you had REM's Murmur, uh, the Violent Femmes, self-titled, uh, Tears for Fears, The Hurting. Uh, you had Big Country, The Eurythmics, Billy Idol, Elvis Costello. Talking Heads, I mean, so many great bands that I love them all dearly and still listen to them to this day. But there's two albums that stood out that year that really got me into music and really finding my own. And uh, here they are. So the first one is U2, War. This was their uh, third album, uh, of course, released in 83. Uh, recorded in Dublin at Windmill Lane Studios, uh, produced by Steve Lillywhite. And, um, you know, as the title says, this was their anti-war album. Uh, this is the Canadian, this is my original version from when I was 15. This is my original Canadian. You can see the maple leaf on here. And uh, you can tell I liked them because I, I looked after it. It's a beautiful gatefold. And, um, yeah, so, of course, I was born in Belfast, and uh, I know all about the Troubles, and I know all about the conflict in Ireland, and, um, you know, my family left Belfast because of the Troubles, and um, so I know Sunday Bloody Sunday very well. Uh, for those of you who don't, Sunday Bloody Sunday happened in uh, Derry, London Derry, in um, 1969, I believe. Uh, where the British Army uh, shot uh, innocent protesters. And, uh, yeah. So, Sunday Bloody Sunday kicks this album off. Uh, then we go into Seconds, which is about uh, the chance of nuclear proliferation. And, uh, interesting, The Edge sings lead on that. Uh, New Year's Day uh, was the other big hit after Sunday Bloody Sunday. And that is about the solidarity, solidarity movement in Poland. And uh, just a great song. Uh, then we have Like a Song. And the side finishes with Drowning Man. And um, yeah, just a fantastic first side. The drumming um, on Like a Song is unreal. Uh, side two starts with The Refugee. <clears throat> and then goes to their... Third single of the album, uh, Two Hearts Beat as One, which is the love song. Uh, then we go to Red Light, which is, uh, I'm assuming, about a prostitute. Uh, Surrender. And then, of course, we finish with The Wonderful 40, which, interestingly, pardon me, still ends concerts to this day. I mean, we all... We all leave those stadiums singing, how long will we sing this song? And uh, the answer is forever. Uh, you know, U2 went on to be bigger than this. 
and um, and I, I I still for the most part like their music. Um, probably not as big of a fan of the last two or three albums, but certainly up to oof, all that you can leave behind. I guess was probably the last great U2 album, I'm going to say. But certainly after this, of course, The Joshua Tree, um, The Unforgettable Fire, and uh, Octone Baby would be my top three albums. So yeah, 1983, U2's War. Life-changing. The other band that I really got into, and unfortunately this was their last album, um, so I had to work backwards when I was a kid, but I, I remember, this isn't my original version, this is actually a Japanese repressing that I got. I actually remember buying this um, from Sam the Record Man, which was a Canadian um, music store across Canada, and uh, I remember it came out midweek, and I bought it on cassette, because uh, I had a Walkman, right? And I remember I made my mom drive me after school to the mall to go to Sam the Record Man and I bought Synchronicity the day it came out and I went home and I listened to it for weeks on end straight and um, yeah The Police Synchronicity their fifth and final studio album as I said this is a Japanese repress you can see the Japanese there um, Pretty much how I remember it with the stripes. And we have this booklet, which is just like how it was on the original. Great picture of uh, Stuart, Andy, and Sting. So let's talk about the album. So we start with uh, Synchronicity 1. Which was just a great, I mean, it just started strong right out of the gate. Um, Walking in Your Footsteps. And uh, Oh My God. Those were all Sting songs. And then we went to Mother, which is uh, Andy's contribution to the album. And that's probably the song that gets the most flack on this album. Um, Miss Gredenko, which is Stuart's contribution to the album. And then Side One finish with a blast with Synchronicity 2. Um, so, I, you know, I thought Side 1 was really, it really rocked. Like, it had a great pace. Um, the musicianship really came through. Um, yeah, just really polished, really produced, and um, really strong. Um, and then Side 2 is, I guess, more like the pop side. Um, of course, what can you say? Every breath you take. Um, King of Pain. Great song. Wrapped Around Your Finger, which I also loved, was a great song. And then, of course, Tea in the Sahara. I mean, God, four. I, I don't. I know they all charted. I'm not sure um, if they all reached number ones, but they were all top tens for sure. Obviously, Every Breath You Take was number one for months, it seemed like. I remember on the cassette, you got a bonus track on side two. You got uh, Murder by Numbers, which was a great song. You know, that was a throwaway. You know, maybe they should have thrown away Mother. <laughs> um, but maybe Stuart and Andy had to get a song. Anyway, iconic album. From this, I work backwards. Um, you know, Ghost of Machines and Yada Mandata, Atlantis de Moore, and uh, Regatta de Blanc and then Atlantis de Moore. Um, Today, this probably isn't my favorite Police album, but it got me into them, and the whole style of music that they produced, that uh, white reggae, as they called it. And, um, yeah, so 1983, U2's War, The Police Synchronicity, the two albums, and why. Thanks, guys. I hope you enjoyed, and Matt, congratulations on all your subs. Take care.